Back in October 10th, my good friend Garth Beagle, he twittered me a private message saying that there was a Quadra 605 on Craigslist. And he didn't think it was too terribly far from me. And I responded back to him, no, it's not. It was for free. Just had to go and pick it up. So Garth had messaged them, didn't get any response. So he sent me the info and I messaged them and I said, hey, I can pick it up during my lunch hour. Not expecting to hear anything back. And like within five minutes, they said, that is great. We'll leave it out in front on the couch. Just swing by and pick it up. I told them what time I'd be there. I went there. There it was sitting all by itself. I picked it up and I looked around. I did not see anybody else there because it looked like they were moving because they said they were going to be in and out all day. And it would have been nice to ask them if they had any more computer peripherals. I would have loved to have the keyboard for this thing. So I picked it up. I put it in my car, went back to work, finished work. Then I text Garth on the way home saying that, hey, I got it. Uh, when I get home, I'll talk to you more about it. So basically I contacted Garth. We had a little private video session and we opened this thing up. We did some preliminary test. And so there were some board issues. It would not boot up. It did the def chime. Now this thing was extremely yellowed. It had a ton of dust in it. And you can tell that this thing had not been used for 15, 20 years. So what I did is I sent the board to Garth. And in the meantime, what I did on my next live stream, which I'll put a link in the description, is I took this thing apart, took the power supply out, the SCSI hard drive, the floppy drive, took the board out, which I'd already had done because I sent it to Garth. And I retrobrighted the case. And you can see it's an absolute beautiful platinum color like it should have been. We serviced the floppy drive. The thing was really, really dusty. Blew all the dust out. We also recapped the power supply the following week. So we did that on the 12-hour uh, live stream that we did. And I'll put a link in the description for that 12-hour stream. So Garth sent me a recap kit and he sent me a quadra board that would fit in this machine that he had an extra one that he had worked on while he was working on the one that I sent because it's got multiple problems. So we got that installed. Garth also sent me a blue SCSI, already formatted it for me. And that was fantastic because the SCSI drive was dead in this thing. It would spin up and then shut down. And that's to be expected on these old machines. So we got the new board in, we recapped the power supply, tested the floppy drive, and it works wonderfully. And our channel sponsor is PCBWay.com. They can do all kinds of neat stuff like this. Hey, and they offer a variety of services like PCB prototyping, PCB assembly, flex rigid flex PCB, CNC machining, 3D printing, offering you the best value, fast turnaround, one-on-one -on -one assistance, truly a one-stop solution for PCB and assembly. So go to PCBWay.com and see what they can do for you. And you can see that it looks really nice. Our retro brighting came out just fine. I did that on the stream as well. Matches the bottom now. And then I, as a badge of honor, I left the old assay tag for where it originally came from. And I tell you what, this thing is really nice. I really enjoy this thing. Now the, uh, now the 605s are unique in themselves because they have the unique case design out of all the LCs. This was the only one that had that. And apparently this is a very desirable case model. But anyway, we'll uh, pop the cover off here. So that way you can take a look on the inside here. Now the um, cover looks brand new. Like I said, this thing looked brand new. Once you got the dust off of it, the thing looked new. You can tell it wasn't messed with. But here's the uh, inside of it. It's all beautifully clean. Power supply is in great shape. Uh, this is the temporary board that Garf sent me while he's trying to figure out the issue with my other one. And then this is the, the blue SCSI that he so graciously uh, sent me. Now it is a little tight in here because of the type of uh, cable. Uh, I need to find a little better solution for this. So maybe I can find a little different uh, connector here or a shorter SCSI cable so this is not so bunched up because I really have to jam it in there uh, to make that thing fit in there. But the audio is great on it. Now what I want to do is, you know, me, I like the mod stuff. And so basically I want to take advantage of this uh, direct processor slot and this here.
So what I'd love to find for this thing is um, I do want to upgrade the memory to it. So I want to upgrade the memory for this. That's one of the first things I want to do. And I've been on a hunt for a 120 megabyte card. And we'll take this one out and put that in there so that give me a lot more memory. But the other thing I want to do is I want to find a G3 Power PC upgrade card for this thing. I think that would be pretty cool to be able to run a Power PC on this thing. Really push this thing to its limits. So that's going to be my next upgrade is we're going to look for a Power PC upgrade card for it, processor upgrade card, and we're going to upgrade the memory in it as well. But other than that, it's a beautiful, beautiful machine. I'm very grateful to Garth for sending me that lead. Usually a lot of times uh, when I respond to them, the machine's already gone. And I really lucked out. I really didn't think I was going to get this. But this was a really a nice uh, diamond in the rough. I mean, the thing is absolutely gorgeous. So, yeah. So, like I said, when we put the cover on it, though, we have to be really careful with these cables on it. And this is where the hard drive used to sit. Hard drive out of it. And like I said, it's an Apple branded drive. It's an 80 megabyte drive. And like I said, it does spin up, but then after that, it spins down. Now, uh, there are a couple things we could do. We might even try to do it, is take this access plate off, power it up, because it could be just the head is stuck. Um, and that's one option we could do because it would be nice to recover the data that's on this thing if there's any data on it we might try to do that might try to do that on a live stream that might be pretty cool and get a little better connector for this so it's not so bunched up in there um, because I can't really lay this thing in there because the way it is it's very tight and it almost, almost, it's kind of hard to snap the cover down on it too because this thing, it's right up against the cover there. But the amazing thing about this Quadra is the plastics are in great shape. Nothing is broken, nothing is cracked. And again, very lucky on that. So obviously it was kept out of the environment. It was probably stored away in some closet or something. But anyway, yeah. So I'm going to turn this on so you can see how nice it works. Turn these lights off so we'll see the screen a little better there. Turn the monitor on here. Oh yeah. And one thing about these machines is your video won't boot up. You have to trick it because I do not have a battery on it. I learned that from Garth. So what we have to do is trick it. We'll turn the monitor back on. You have to turn it off. And turn it right back on immediately. And that will let the video pop up on it there there we go hey so I do have to get a battery for that that way you can program settings on it but we have a mouse cursor there and it takes a minute for it to boot up here and you see it's a pretty fast little machine here but just think how much faster it would be if we could put a power PC upgrade in it And of course, it's going to tell us the clock because we don't have a PRAM battery in it. But there we go. And of course, uh, we're lucky. Uh, he put some nice little games on here for me. And this doesn't roll very good on the carpet, but we have uh, After Dark. We have some flying toasters on there. And then we we'll just uh, wake it up here. But yeah, we got... Um, we actually have two systems on here. We have 7.61 and then we have uh, 7.1. And the reason being is because Sean at Geek with Social Skills sent me a Macintosh SE. I had saw that on his channel a while back and during my birthday, I said, hey, I would take that. I'd like to give it a good home. So basically, he sent it to me. I just basically paid him for shipping. And uh, lo and behold, I got it. And you can see that on a live stream too, what we did to that thing. So we can just go ahead and go into a 7.1 here and just click it. And uh, we're just gonna look here. 
and we got all kinds of stuff in here. And this mouse doesn't roll very good because uh, I don't have a, a mouse pad on it here. But let's go into the games and apps and things here. And we're going to look at it, uh, let's see, we're going to view it by icon here. And let's see, we got uh, installers, games, multimedia. Let's uh, take and make this a little bit bigger here. Serial, number, serial numbers and hacks, installer and stuff. And again, we're just... Uh, View it by a small icon there. There we go. So we have all kinds of things here. So let's get out of here. And as you can see, we got all kinds of games and stuff on here. Again, we'll view it by icon here. All kinds of fun stuff. A Jeopardy, King. Oh, you got Monopoly. You just got all kinds of games here. And I don't know if all of them here will open up on this uh, particular machine, on this version of software. We have, uh, hmm, Star Trek. Let's take a look at that. Oh, look at that. Hmm. Let's see if this actually works. Okay, let's try it. Take a look here. I have not tried this. Ooh, look at that. Cool. Look at those graphics. Cool. Pretty neat. Pretty slick. Probably with the G3 power... PC upgrade might run a lot better. Yeah, pretty cool. Very neat. Wow, look at that. That's awesome. That's cool. Very, very neat. See here. I have no idea how to play this, so uh, let's see. Oh. Let's see here. Wow, look at that. You really can't hear it. It's uh, the volume's really turned down on this, but you hear like the scanner, like you would actually hear on the TV show, which is pretty cool. So anyway, uh, oh look at that red alert, pretty cool. Oh look at the phaser sound. That's pretty neat. Yeah, let's shut it down here. Quick game. Yeah, we'll quit it. All right. Yeah, it's pretty neat. So we'll uh, turn it off here. It's safe to turn it off. And we'll do that. There we go. Nice. Yeah, that's a cool little game. Like I said, there's all kinds of software on this thing I haven't even explored yet. So pretty neat. So yeah, so that is the ongoing saga of the Macintosh Quadra 605. So I don't know if Garth will be able to um, get that other board resurrected. It'd be nice if he did. That way I can give this one back to him. But it was very, very, very nice of him to uh, loan that to me so we can play with it for a little bit. But yeah, I mean, I think actually what I'd love to do if I could ever find one, would get a period correct monitor for this. 
But I think I would mod that. I think I would put an LCD screen in it, uh, but have the case on it. I think that'd look pretty cool. That might be another thing we're going to do in the future too. Also, probably need to get, uh, I have this uh, Apple keyboard, extended keyboard, and it's a fantastic keyboard. I did a video on that, did it already retrobited, and got all that stuff. But, you know, I have one keyboard for these machines. I have lots of uh, other keyboards for the Power PC machines, because they're USB, but this one here is ADB, and uh, so I'm kind of limited. So I'm gonna have to invest in some uh, period correct keyboards for the uh, the LCs that I have. I have the LC, which also Garth donated to my channel. Very nice of him to do that. And it works beautifully. And then also uh, from Big Bad Biologist, I actually won his giveaway. So he had an LC3 that he gave. He totally restored it, went through a total restoration on it. And he also did a really cool update on it as far as the upgrade. And with that machine, you can run it at the higher megahertz. And it's basically almost like an LC3 plus uh, because you got that nifty little mod that he did. So it runs at a higher megahertz machine. So really neat, but yeah, pretty cool. All right, so that's gonna do it in this video. This is the kind of the, the brief story of the Quadra 605, how I came about it and all the help that I've had to get this thing running great. So please uh, give me a thumbs up on the video. I really appreciate it. Please subscribe and click the notification bell. We're also on Twitter and MeWe. I also stream videos on Rumble and Odyssey. So you can watch for me out there too as well. But my home channel is YouTube. So until then, you guys have a great rest of your week. And I'll see you in the next video.